Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, like Jim mentioned, my name is Lucy Roberts and I'm a grad student studying cartography at the University of Oregon. Um, but I'm here today to present about my undergraduate research where I was looking at the prevalence and variation in international COVID-19 dashboards. And so, for a show of hands, um, how many of us in this room have seen this image before? Yeah, it's pretty much universal at this point. Um, it kind of became this viral icon at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, and it was a resource that people turned to at the outbreak of COVID-19 when very little was known about the virus, except approximately how many people had it and where they were. The dashboard was invented by a graduate student, so represent, uh, Ensheng Dong from Johns Hopkins University, who had family near the Wuhan province in China. His background was in statistics and geography, and he was a former intern at Esri, so he was familiar with ArcGIS dashboards. And when uh, the COVID-19 outbreak started, he approached his advisor, Laura Gardner, and together they built the Hopkins COVID-19 dashboard. In many ways, these kind of dramatic visuals were which show the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic at local, national, and international scales were the burning landscape, the smoke rising over the hill that we all collectively observed as the virus became a global phenomenon. Now, as it turns out, a lot of researchers have found it relevant to look at these kinds of infographics of COVID-19. For instance, in 2020, Amir Asud Momenapur and others evaluated 16 states' COVID-19 public health dashboards and provided a list of recommended features to make dashboards more usable. In 2020, Sarvaswar Praharaj and others from Arizona State University similarly performed a systematic analysis of 68 different state United States dashboards, and the results from the results tried to create a prototypical exemplary dashboard of COVID-19 spread. However, in the literature I reviewed, I found that most of these reviews focused in the United States, and therefore I was interested in how these types of dashboards varied at an international level. However, in order to do that, I needed to understand what exactly constitutes a dashboard. And I found that in a lot of ways, we don't have really robust language to describe it. In 2006, Stephen Few defined a dashboard as a visual display of the most important information needed to achieve one or more objectives, consolidated and arranged on a single screen so the information can be monitored at a glance. A decade later, in 2016, Wexler and others took a more generalized definition and moved away from the paradigm that a dashboard must occupy a single screen. Instead saying, a dashboard is a visual display of data used to monitor conditions and or facilitate understanding. This likely reflects the shift in technology during that time away from having a single static dashboard like a mounted TV or the dash on a car to having more dynamic dashboards that people could interact with individually. In 2022, Bach and others built on Wexler's definition by expanding that dashboards do not simply reflect data, but are a purposely curated lens through which data must be seen and engaged with. Dashboards can be made by a wide variety of institutions to track progress on goals, identify trends, and make data-driven decisions. And their flexibility is what makes them as useful as they are challenging to define. The diversity of their applications reflects how a dashboard's design can have many configurations based on the context, audience, and resource limitations of the designer. So therefore, I uh, echoed Wexler and Bach's assessment of dashboard diversity and remained open-minded to what a dashboard could be considered in order to encapsulate a wider range of international design choices. Therefore, I designed, defined a dashboard in this context to be the display of information presented through a purposefully curated lens used to monitor conditions and facilitate understanding about a topic. Now, since I promised the NASIS gods that I would let you all look at some maps throughout this presentation, I'm just gonna kind of put up some examples of some national COVID-19 dashboards so we can get a really understanding of how much these varied in country to country. Another show of hands, does anyone recognize this particular dashboard? 
a handful of people here. This is the United States Center for Disease Control's COVID-19 data tracker, which was a very robust uh, attempt to look at many different facets of the COVID-19 pandemic across the United States. Another show of hands, any big visitors to the Peruvian COVID-19 dashboard here? There's a lot of variation in how these dashboards got approached, designed, and developed, often based on the availability of data in these various countries and the resource limitations of the public health uh, government and the public health ministries. Here's another example from the government of Pakistan showing how um, COVID was spreading in very different states or provinces uh, throughout the country. And so, in collecting this set of dashboards, it led me to a series, two different research questions, which, if I didn't have animations, you would see before you. The first question was, how did COVID-19 dashboards created by national agencies differ in their design? And the second was, how did national COVID-19 dashboards differ in their functionality? In particular, since many of these dashboards were developed using software platforms known as platform as a service providers, things like ArcGIS dashboards and Microsoft um, Power BI and Tableau, what impact did platform as a service providers have on the differences in functions between different countries' COVID-19 dashboards? To answer those questions, I performed a content analysis, which is a methodolo methodologically explicit system of analyzing the contents of a visual image that was originally adapted from written and spoken text. A content analysis requires careful procedure for selecting images, devising categories for the images, coding the images, and analyzing the results. So, for my research, I started with a list of 45 different countries that at the beginning of COVID-19 had the most COVID spread in September of 2020, six months after the outbreak of the original pandemic, as those are the countries that I determined were most likely to have a robust response to the COVID-19 pandemic at the time. Then for each country, I Googled a list of keyword searches for the country's COVID dashboard or public health department in English, and if that returned no results, in that country's national language using Google Translate. Based on that, I was able to collect a series of 28 different COVID-19 dashboards. In order to categorize them, I relied heavily on a paper from Benjamin Bach and other human-computer interaction researchers in the United Kingdom, which included taxonomy of dashboard design patterns. So for each potential feature or layout, I wrote a Boolean yes or no question if the dashboard had that characteristic. I added a few codes to Bach's taxonomy as I was moving through this process and so that I could uh, analyze different patterns that I was seeing myself, such as the availability of data download buttons and language localization. Once I had the categories for the images, I went to, through the process of trying to code for if each of the dashboards had those characteristics. And this is where I ran into a significant problem in my research. Even though I had uncovered 28 different international COVID-19 dashboards, when I went to go visit those websites, four of those dashboards had already been removed from the internet and I no longer had access to them. I tried to use internet archiving resources such as the Wayback Machine. However, this led to the issue of archivability. What I found was that there were essentially three different categories of archivable websites. Some websites were fully archivable, meaning that if I put their URL into the uh, archive, such as the Wayback Machine, I would be able to see a recreation of the data as it stood on a particular day earlier in the pandemic. Here is an example of the Brazilian COVID dashboard, which was a fully archivable COVID dashboard. Here you can see if you put it uh, on the, okay, I don't know my lefts and rights, but on the left, um, you have the COVID dashboard as it stood just kind of in the ether of the internet, and on the right, as it was in the Wayback Machine, still showing all of the data. On the other hand, this dashboard was completely unarchivable, built in Microsoft's Power BI, meaning that when I accessed it on the internet and then tried to plug it into the Wayback Machine, there was no way to actually see what the website looked like pre prior. 
This poses a significant problem for researchers and people interested in citing these kind of dashboards as sources when they're talking about the impact of COVID-19 or trying to provide any journalistic integrity. There's no way to go back and actually look at what the dashboards were saying in the past if they're not archivable. Based on that, I collected the code of the dashboard, the codes for the dashboards that were still available on the internet and started to analyze the results. First off, I was of the 24 dashboards, there were two that kind of subverted my traditional expectations of what could or could not be considered a dashboard. First off, the Romanian COVID-19 dashboard was a series of PDFs that included multiple different um, was a series of PDFs that was published from something like Microsoft Power BI, but um, was then just uploaded as a PDF to this website. However, it was regularly updated with data pertaining to that country and was the specific lens through which it was created. Additionally, the Chinese COVID-19 dashboard was rather a series of updates about the COVID-19 situation as it occurred in China. And I decided to include both of but didn't include any uh, data visualization examples or infographics. Previous researchers who'd looked at the Chinese COVID dashboard had included this as a dashboard. And in fact, I was considering it as a, the fact that there were no data visualizations was in and of itself a purposefully curated lens that the government was using to approach the COVID-19 pandemic. So the first research question was, how did COVID-19 dashboards created by national governments differ in their design? And as you saw in my list of codes, I went through a whole series of examples of these. And in some ways, there were remarkable consistencies in the amount of um, interactivity and the types of graphics they were providing. One thing that I added to the um, list of of codes from Bach was he had this list of different types of uh, ways that you could display data, everything from line graphs to tables and lists, and he had no maps on there. Um, so I did end up coding for those, and of the 24 that I was looking at, over 20 of them included maps of the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic on their dashboards. For the purposes of this presentation, since it was going to only be 15 minutes, I focused in on one example of differences in dashboard interaction patterns. There, according to Bach, four ways that you can generally format uh, interaction with a COVID-19 dashboard. First, you have exploration interaction, where you give full control over to the user to really explore the data um, and have multiple different data sets that they could be comparing. The second is personalization interaction, where you have data that the user can personalize to themselves based on their positionality in the world. The third is navigation interaction. I think of this as panning around a map, being able to click from tab to tab, but not necessarily having control over what is being displayed to you. And finally, drill down interaction, perhaps being able to move from a national level to a state level when you're looking at the different types of data available. In the first, the dashboard user gets to control the data story being presented to them. However, in the second, the dashboard designer controls the data story and provides most of the functionality. And as you can see here, the vast majority of the dashboards I was looking at primarily focused on navigation and drill down interaction, with fewer adding in opportunities for the user to really go back and, and customize the information. Additionally, the United States was the only uh, country I saw that had data forecasting available on their um, COVID-19 dashboard. This can be also kind of related to the political climate in the United States at the time where we were relying very heavily on narratives about how the COVID pandemic would spread in order to encourage certain behaviors like masking and social distancing. However, these quickly became fraught because if everyone were to follow the recommendations based on the data forecasting, it quickly provide, makes the forecast seem out of whack or, or exaggerated, and therefore can potentially contribute to political polarization. The second research question I was looking at was how national COVID-19 dashboards differed in their functionality for, language local, for functions such as language localization, data download, and archivability. A number of the 
dashboards I was looking at that I cannot find, I believe it was 10, um, provided options for language localization. In fact, the Egyptian dashboard provided over 24 languages that their dashboard could be um, translated into. Interestingly, there were also options to not just customize the language that was available, but for example, in a slide that got removed while I was editing this this morning without a keyboard, um, the Kuwait dashboard, which translated from Arabic into English, also was then able to shift the widgets to move from a right-oriented widget display to a left-oriented widget display. Of the uh, access to data download links, no matter the platform as a service provider that was being built in, um, data was integrated, data download was integrated in about half of the dashboards provided. And I should add for context that 11 of the dashboards that I found were built using a platform as a service provider, while 13 of them were built um, just by the dashboard designers themselves. Here you can see an example of a fully archivable dashboard from uh, Qatar. And the United States, in the United States, our COVID-19 dashboard was actually not fully archivable. If you go back, you can see the skeleton of the COVID-19 dashboard, but the data it was displaying and the interaction patterns have been lost, meaning potential future researchers are not going to be able to look back at this time and re-examine this very valuable ephemera in order to understand how we were thinking about and conceptualizing the spread of COVID-19 at this time. And other uh, countries, such as Saudi Arabia, that built their dashboards using ArcGIS dashboards were not going to have opportunities to look back at them at all. There it is, see? Left to right alignment. I have some key findings and takeaways, but I'm going to share those um, perhaps individually and in the paper I'm working on moving forward. However, I am out of time, so I'd like to open the floor up to questions. I completely agree, and also that was a, a, a bullet that I was trying to kind of play around with how to put on here. Um, in the process of doing this research, I looked at a couple of different news media outlets to see their responses, and one thing that I noticed was that um, there was a lot of use of these types of dashboards by the American alt-right uh, in news articles such as Breitbart, uh, very heavily cited the New York Times COVID dashboard. Because there was no, um, data normalization or kind of t key takeaways from the dashboards and they were just providing data values, they enhanced the confirmation bias of the user. I can't speak directly to how significantly they impacted that because that was not the purpose of my study, but I would highly encourage anyone who's interested in it to look into it because I think there's a lot of um, crossover there. 